Hey, hi everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, so I came, I came here today to talk to you about NetDiffuser, which is an R package that we have been working around uh, nine months so far. Uh, okay, so for first, some acknowledgements. So we want to like, would like to thank uh, uh, support from the National Cancer Institute and National Institute of Health. Uh, the other developers that are, uh, uh, sorry, the. Um, the groups, uh, Center for Applied Network Analysis and Computation and Social Sciences at USC, and the other, the, the, the other coders on NetEffusers, Tom Valente, Stephanie Dial, and Timothy Hayes. Uh, okay, so well, I'm going to start uh, talking to you, uh, showing you some of the motivations that lead us to develop NetEffuser, then show you NetEffuser with some examples. Uh, that's basically the presentation. So. Before I start, what's network diffusion of innovation? So this is basically the merge of two fields. Diffusion of innovations, that's Rogers, Emerson Rogers' book, and social network analysis. Uh, so mostly this is actually a, a whole field and, and Tom has been working on it a couple of decades already. Uh, and actually that book, the network diffusion of innovations, is actually the first version of Net Diffuser. There you can see the Gauss code of the first functions uh, that we have included in the package. So what is, what is network diffusion anyway? Uh, so it tries to explain how new ideas and practices, you can talk about them as innovations or not actually, spread within and between communities. Uh, this, uh, while a lot of factors have been shown to influence diffusion, there are social, uh, spatial factors, economic factors, cultural, uh, social network is a prominent one. Uh, and yeah, this has to do a lot with the previous struggle, uh, I would say. Uh, but more than contagion itself, uh, diffusion in social network is more complex because you no longer need uh, a tie is no longer enough for you to uh, like uh, to adopt a particular behavior. You need some other things uh, there. Uh, and the way we think of this is like uh, exposure and threshold levels. So you will adopt in some in some level depending on how exposed are you to a particular behavior. Uh, so the basic idea here is that you have every, each one of us have thresholds uh, and depending on whether we attain that th threshold level by being exposed to a certain level, so uh, and what I mean uh, with exposed, I mean how many individuals of, of your ego network, local network, have adopted a particular behavior, you will adopt or not, depending on your own threshold. Uh, and the thing is that uh, NetDiffuser uh, does kind of, it's kind of focused on that. Uh, you can make this more, a little bit more complex and, and extend it more, and that's what NetDiffuser does. So what's NetDiffuser? Well, Net, uh, okay, so NetDiffuser is an app package that is designed for visualizing, analyzing, and simulated network diffusion processes. So I'm talking about dif uh, dynamic networks here. Uh, depends on some pretty popular packages, so it's uh, built upon RCPP Armadillo, so it's fast. Uh, matrix, so you can hold big data sets here. Yes, and StatNet and iGraph, so uh, we're not building like everything from scratch. We are uh, building upon some other things, right? This is just to give you some clues. So it, it has roughly about 14,000 lines of code between R, source, source code, and tests. Uh, it's around uh, 100, uh, 100, pa 100 pages of manual and has four vignettes. So I, this is just a, a side note. I wanted, I wanted to tell you that you can, I can't tell you how excited I was when we reached the 100 pages in the manual. That's, that's super geek, I did that. But for me, it, well, it's, a, it's a proof of all the work that, that is behind this. Uh, so you can, as I told you, I can handle big graphs, more than four billion elements at JGC matrix. Uh, it's already on CRAN with two iterations and has more than 700 downloads since its first release in February this year. Um, and also features make it really easy to read a dynamic graph, uh, so it makes it Nice to work with other packages. Also, just to mention, uh, it, it includes three uh, very popular classical data sets uh, for the diffusion uh, of innovation data. The medical innovations data, Brazilian farmers, and Korean family planning. I'm not going to into details of the, in this, but you can check them out later. Just, uh, okay, so now let's see some examples. Uh, okay, so the, one of the key things of the diffuser is that it's user-friendly, okay? So we have spent a lot of time working on functions to read survey data, for example. Uh, besides of reading a JCC matrix and uh, edge lists, you can read survey data like this. This is a dynamic data set. Is this the pointer? Right, yeah. Where you have times of adoption of a particular uh, behavior, it could, it could be an innovation or not, 
you have some grouping variable and you have network nominations here. So for example, it could be you ask each people, uh, name your three closest friends and they are going to tell you uh, uh, the, the, who are their friends. Uh, and you have some other covariates in the data. Um, so I think that for example, with this data we can use the survey to DiffNet function. And it's as easy as this. So you just, you just uh, point to NetDiffuser what's the data frame. You identify the key columns and you're going to get a nice DiffNet object, which is basically a dynamic graph with uh, attributes, which are also attributes. Uh, and it looks like this. So here you have a dynamic network that uh, shows you uh, in a glance the, the nodes, uh, the time periods, whether it's a director or not, uh, the final prevalence, which is the proportion of individuals who adapted the behavior, uh, see if, and if there are any static or dynamic attributes. Uh, okay, so what are DiffNet objects for? DiffNet objects are, in, for one part, are lists uh, that contains, among other things, uh, as sparse matrices. There are also uh, uh, data frames with vertices, uh, attributes, dynamic attributes, and an integer vector of times of adoption. This is among other things. On the other hand, DiffNet objects are very nice objects because you have a, a, a plenty of methods that you can uh, use with. So you have a, the common methods like the printing, summarizing, plotting, right, the usual deal. You can access attributes, uh, uh, JCC uh, matrix elements, and you can do matrix algebra with this, uh, which is uh, pretty useful, right? Because if you're working with social networks, you want to, I don't know, compute the, the, the power graph or stuff like that, you can do it pretty easily with this. Uh, but also, it has a lot of uh, methods for some of the special functions that are included in the package. For example, computing exposure, threshold levels, infection state, susceptibility, uh, structural equivalence, uh, and some other stuff that we're going to discuss later. One thing to notice here is that uh, while uh, most of the functions are built to work with net diffuser objects, DiffNet objects actually, uh, you can use it with other classes of objects, uh, namely matrices. So if you don't want to work with the diff DiffNet object itself, you can work with your usual matrix array or sparse matrix. Uh, okay, so what we can do with, with DiffNet objects? We plot them like this. This is a default plot. I'm not setting any special uh, attributes here, uh, options to the plotting function. So this is the diffusion of hybrid cone serial of the Brazilian farmers data set. Uh, it has 11 communities and it's, uh, it spans 20 years. So right now here I'm showing only three uh, times, uh, the network in three time points, time periods, and, what, and, and, and vertices are colored in the, in the following fashion. So non-adopters are in white and squares white. The new adopters are red, and the adopters in that time period are in blue. So you can visualize the fusion like this. It's really nice. Uh, otherwise, if you want an, an alternative way of visualizing the fusion, you can use this sort of heat map for vertices. Uh, in this case, we have uh, it's the same, the same as before, the same data, but different layout, right? So you have your graph, but now vertices are colored like this. So early adopters are colored in bluish, and laggards in red. So you can see the efficient patterns this way too. Uh, so you can compute stuff with NetDiffuser and Visualize as well, right? So here is the plot infectious set function that computes infectiousness and susceptibility for each vertex. Uh, and you can, here is you're visualizing it uh, as is linear, but then in the other in the other plot you can see it in, in log scale. Here's another one. This is a, a classic, uh, as some would say. So you have uh, times of adoption in the x-axis, and in the y-axis you have threshold levels, and the network is plotted, is plotted uh, on, uh, on top of it. Uh, this is for, again for the Brazilian farmers, uh, uh, and right, and the colors are given by the by the village that each individual is belongs to. Another classic one here. Uh, here we have uh, you can classify, for example adopters depending on their time of adoption as uh, following Rogers classification as early adopters, late adopter laggards, and Tom's classification using, using threshold levels as well. And here you can visualize it like this. So for example here we can see that uh, this is for the Korean family planning data. We can see that uh, women that are adopted earlier are older. Uh, okay, so uh, all these are small graphs, but what about native user being big? Okay, so this is a, I'm plotting this using a, a, a dynamic diffusion graph that I generated using the rdiffnet function. 
it has 50,000 vertices. It's not big, actually. It's, it's mid-size, I would say. But the thing is that if you visualize it like this, uh, you can't see much, too much patterns, right? Uh, and for this case, we have this pretty nifty function that we are actually we're still working on, but so, so far so good, which is called the diff map. So what is this? This is not a heat map, actually. So what we are doing here is that we are using the structure of the graph, so you need a layout. And over that, we are computing a sort of average kernel, uh, by binomial kernel smooth with the data. So uh, the way this uh, graph was uh, si uh, simulated, the diffusion starts from the center. And, uh, and this way, you can actually see the pattern. Uh, and by the way, you can use this function not necessarily with, with time of adoption. Again, you can use any behavioral continuous variable for it. OK, but we have to be careful with this, right? So if you are working with, the, uh, with heat maps uh, kind of data, you don't want to fall into this. I, I borrowed this from Stack Overflow. So you have a user sites, uh, or site users, subscribers to Matthew Stewart, and consumer of furry pornography. So try not to fall into that when you work with these kind of plots. Uh, OK, so now we can also simulate with net diffuser. Um, for example, here I'm, I'm calling the rdiffnet function. And I'm passing the para uh, parameters so you can see what kind of things you can do. So we, here in the first line, I'm, I'm in this line, I'm setting the number of vertices of the graph, the number of time periods. And then you can set uh, how you want the, the signals, uh, the, the first the adapters, to be distributed. Um, this, here I'm setting as random. You can actually pass a vector here if you want. Uh, the probability of adoption for the first adopters, so this is really the proportion of adopters. Uh, then you can set, for example, which uh, class of graph you want to generate, in this case a small world graph. Uh, you can pass arguments for the random graph function, rewire arguments, threshold distribution, exposure arguments, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, this is just to illustrate. Uh, and also, we can do statistical inference with NetDiffuser. Here is uh, the output from uh, a, test, a statistical test, non-parametric statistical test that we're working on and implemented here that basically tries to test whether a particular behavior depends or not on the structure of the network. Uh, so in this case, where the null hypothesis is whether the time of adoption are independent from the network structure, so it's like no evidence of contagion. And the alternative is that that's not the case. So I run this test using the, these three data sets that they included in the, in, the, in the package. And as you can see, uh, it actually t works, uh, goes really well with previous findings. So for example, in the Korean family planning, there's kind of mixed evidence that there's, there is diffusion, but at the same time, there's some effect of communication and stuff like that, like mass, massive media. In the medical innovation data, I, I, as, as far as I know, there are no big evidence of uh, contagion. But in the case of the Brazilian farmers here, there is evidence of, of contagion, and the test can uh, show that clearly. Uh, again, this is on development. Um, OK, so concluding remarks. Uh, so NetDiffuser is an app package focused on network diffusion of innovations. Actually, diffusion in general, network diffusion in general. So you can apply to health behavior diffusion, which is actually we do that uh, at USC, tobacco, drinking, etc. cetera, uh, memes on social media, you, so you can actually handle big graphs. Uh, control level sp uh, spillover effects. There's a paper that we're working on that right now. And social contagion, human and not in general. Uh, Provides out of the box tools for, for network diffusion analysis, both classic and new. Complements your favorite SNAPR package. So uh, it could be iGraph, Stat, and RCNA. Uh, and, and actually, we're working on to extend this more to other R packages, for example, SPDEP and Spatial Probit to work with uh, spatial auto regressive models. Uh, and it's on active development. So, uh, yeah, and actually, I'm basically being paid to do this all day, so I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. If there's time for one question. So you're showing changes uh, in nodes within the network. What if you have data where the network cha itself changes over time? Are you able to handle that? Yeah, actually, that's included. Uh, all the graphs here are dynamic, so we store each like a uh, yeah. So you have dynamic graphs here. The the connections themselves change over. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you.